Hey everyone, it's Pam from Glam Junk Journals and today we are continuing on in my Altered Book Junk Journal series. This is part two and I'm going to be focusing on page embellishments and decorations. And I wanted to give you guys a little disclaimer up front. I don't know how many videos are going to be in this section as I tend to decorate and embellish my pages a lot. I want to make this as easy as possible to follow. But with that being said, one thing leads to another when I create. So we'll see how this unfolds and comes together. So come along with me and let's get started. So like we put together in the last tutorial, we put together our pages for our signatures and I ended up with three, which is usually what I have in my journals. And there's going to be approximately eight to nine pages in each of the signatures. And you can do as many or as few as you like. So as I mentioned in my last uh, video, I wanted to add some Edith Holden pages and I've got a couple right here. And we're going to create some hinges to make them the uh, size of my journal. So this is my journal cover and this is what I'm going to be using kind of as my template here. And as you can see, it's about a half an inch um, too tall and then maybe a couple inches too wide. So I am going to tear these down and hinge them together. And I pulled out some pages that I just think look really, go really well with this whole color, bleh, color scheme. Okay, so the way I create my hinges, and there's a ton of different ways to do this, is first off, I make them the correct size, like I said. So what I'm going to do is just cut off this torn edge that, um, you know, I, created when I tore them out of the book. So I'm going to cut that down just with my paper cutter here. Like I said, I'm going to cut off um, probably, what did I say, about an inch, inch and a half. So we'll just go along the edge here. Come on. My paper cutter's getting really old. It's, you know, how they get when they get old. They're not as uh, sharp. But that's okay. Let me get this out of the way here. All right. So as you can see on the pages, I still have most of the illustrations, which is what I really, really enjoy. And then let's see if we'll cut off the top or the bottom to make it the right height. I think we'll do the top because that's just blank. So here again, I'm just cutting off about a half an inch on the top. And you could also use, and I've done this in the past, you can use your scrapbooking scissors if you want more of a scalloped edge. So there you go. So there's that. I'll move this out of the way here. And then we're just going to hinge these together. I like to do uh, washi tape on my hinges, but a thing with washi tape, and I have not found one that really sticks well, so I always have to add a little bit of glue onto the back of my washi to make it stick. So I am going to just measure enough for one, the length of one side here. And I am going to use my Scotch Create, Create glue stick and add a little bit of extra staying power onto the washi. Have you guys ever found a washi that really sticks well? I mean, I've tried tons and tons of different brands and I have yet to find one. Let me know <laughs> if there is one. So what I'm doing is I'm layering about half, laying half of the page over the washi and it doesn't matter if it's exact. I have a hard time getting to be exact here. I'll try to do my best. See, there you go. See, I told you. Uh. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to do the other side here. Like that. And it doesn't matter if they line up exactly because they're going to be um, in two separate areas of your journal. So that really doesn't matter. 
and then I'm going to take a little bit like on the corner just on the edge and go down the center because I found if I put this straight down I get a lot of extra glue on the outside and I don't like that so I'm trying to go right along the seam here see how I did just right along the middle just to give the washi some extra staying power I'm going to take it back up the center and press it down and I think that looks pretty dang good cool all right so that looks fabulous I'm just going to cut this off the top of my scissors here Okay, move that out of the way. Now from here, what I like to do is I like to sew down the middle, which I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do that on camera because I want to continue on with what we got going today. So what I'm going to do is I am going to sew down the center of this and then just fold it over. See, because as you can see, even though I glued it, the washi is still kind of coming up on the edges. Oh, but doesn't that look cool with the yellow? Oh, yay. Love that. Okay, so here's another page. Da -da -da, easy enough. You could also use just a regular piece of scrapbook paper. You, I've done it with fabric. I've done it with ribbon. Same kind of theory. Works for me. All right, so there you go. This is going to be in one of my signatures. I don't know which one yet. But we're going to continue on. And remember what I was talking about. The gorgeous pages in this book. I mean, look at these pages. Oh, every single page has this ornate kind of frame around each one. I don't know how well you can see that. But isn't that fabulous? Oh, so I want to feature that. I want to feature that. So what I did is I took out a couple pages right here. It's just random, doesn't matter, you know. And I don't think my Lady Caprice is going to be saying anything too, you know, anything vulgar or have any bad words in it. So um, I'm, I feel pretty safe with that. But just, you know, check out what your words say if you're going to use them in your journals and they're going to show up. Another thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take this out and this out because I just think those are fabulous pages and feature them somewhere in the journal. But see, this is how I see I get going and then I get off to a tangent. So stick with what we're doing here, Pam. Okay, so I thought, what could we do with this? Well, I am going to make a fold over pocket for one of my pages. And we're starting with kind of what I consider a blank canvas for, you know, pages to embellish. Granted, you know, they do have a little bit of pattern, but what I like is to put another pattern on top of a pattern. So let's just do it. And what better piece of paper than that? This is the scrapbook paper that is on the exterior of one of my signatures. And what I'm going to do is, I mean, look, it's almost exactly the same size. Is that cool or what? Yes. Okay. What I'm going to do is I am going to do a diagonal cut or tear, let's say tear, right here across the front. And what um, you want to get is about three, three pages of uh, your book page. And the reason I want to do that is because it just makes the pocket more sturdy. If you just use one, sometimes with these old vintage books, they tear. And I want my pocket to hold up to putting things behind it and having some additional embellishments on the top. So if I didn't want to use all my Caprice letter page, or I should say my Caprice, Caprice pages, I could use other 
old book pages or blank sheets of cardstock or you know scrapbook paper whatever you want to use you just want to make it a little sturdy so what i'm going to do is I'm gonna move the interior of this signature out of the way so we're just working with the front page right i am going to tear right along the side just you know kind of halfway up the side diagonal to the bottom and if you don't have a tear ruler use scissors or just freehand doesn't matter does not matter so these are we are memory keepers and these are the bomb the bomb and the way i remember which way is up is because you have to be able to read we are tear guide <laughs> and that way when you pull the paper towards you at an angle you get a perfect tear oh, oh, oh look how cool that looks okay now other side you got to be smarter than the paper right so i want another one to mirror this now this page is not going to work for that because if i flip it over all the writing is going to be upside down but do i care let's see yeah, I kind of do because I just think it looks better. So we're going to grab some more pages out of our book. I'm going to tear those out. And another thing that's cool about vintage books is usually you can uh, deconstruct them rather easily. So let's get this example here. And I'm going to make it the same height. So we're going to go across. And this is all eyeballs, right, guys? Eyeballs. Oh, Got to flip this up so that we, our memory keepers, are going the right way. And we're going to get about the same size on the other side. So that top and that top looks about the same. So we're going to do the whole tear thing again. Whoops. It's moving around on me. All right. Let's see how we did. Yes, looks cool. Look at that. <laughs> now, from here, what do you want to do? Well, of course, I want to embellish more, right? And to me, these kind of blend with the background. They're different patterns, but I want to bring something extra onto these pages. So that's where some cardstock is going to come in. So let me move all my stuff out of the way here. So we got some, some things to choose from. Now what I did is these are some off cuts of the other side of these two sided papers. When I cut them down to eight and a half by 11, I have this extra because they were large sheets 12 by 12 so I've got some backgrounds so let's see if any of these look cool you know they look cool but I want something with even more zing maybe that okay yeah let's do that oh that looks really good should we do the same thing on both sides or something different on the other if you see what I'm doing I'm kind of creating a tier Let's see. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go with it. Don't think too much, right? Right. Okay, so we're going to do that. Move this stuff out of the way, and I am just going to create a smaller triangle there. How do I want this little bit right here? scalloped probably so what i'm going to do is i am going to just eyeball it and make a little bit smaller triangle now granted i'm sure there's better ways to do this this is just how i do it so i'm going to go along the outside there and just cut along these edges and what it's going to be is it's going to be a little shorter than this top so it's going to be at an angle like that so let me get out my cutter again 
stuff is flying around the craft room, you guys. Flying around the craft room. All right, so I'm going to just do a cut right along there. You could also use scissors, although I am, like I've said many times, not that great with cutting a straight line. Let's just say. So it's easier for me to follow an outline. And always, always save your off cuts. You guys know that. Oh, that looks really good. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Like I said, I do want this top to be scalloped. So let me get out one of my scissors here. I just think it adds interest to it. So we're going to do these. If not, no big deal. It's whatever you guys, you know, want to end up with. you go. Yay. <laughs> okay, so there is one. Now, granted, this is cute, but it's not complete. No way. Not in the Glam Junk Journal book. Okay, so I have to do the other side here, which is what I'm going to do. So let's figure that out. Let's see what we got on the other side. No, I don't want more of the same. No. Where's my other pieces? I want something with some pizzazz. Pizzazz. That looks pretty good. Mm, do I have anything else? No. Okay, so we're going to go with it. We're going to do that again. Let's see now. What part do I want? Do I want the blue or that? I want this. All right, so there again, we're going to draw a line. How did I do this on the other one? I know what I'll do. There. Ha, got to be smarter than the paper. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Oops. And those are the wrong ones. I got too many scissors out. The wrong scallop. Oh, no. So I hope you guys are... Having a wonderful day. I am doing fabulous here. We got about two feet of snow at our house yesterday, and it's towards the end of May, so that's just nuts. All right, so let's see what we got here. We got this on this side, right? And this on this side. Oh, look at that. Look at how pretty that looks, you guys. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Now, let's get this all together and get this on our page. So if you remember, there's three of these sheets together just to make them more sturdy. I'm just going to take some glue stick and stick them together. And believe me, I have tried the other way, um, you know, of just doing like one page. It doesn't work very well because then, you know, you're fighting with your tags, putting in them in there, and then they don't stay together. And bleh. so there is that one. Now this to me looks a little big still. See now, how come when I measure it, it looks good, and then after I cut it, it doesn't? It's an enigma. But I'm going to just make it smaller. Just cut it down a little bit. No big deal, right? I just cut the end off and made it a smaller one. There you go. Yay. All right, let's do the same on this side. Stick these pieces together. <clears throat> oh, I got four on this side. Do I need four? No, I'll do three. All right, four pieces. Let's stick these together. Okay. All right, now, don't these look good? Yes, they do. Why, thank you. I think so, too. Okay, now I like to distress my edges, 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I usually use, let me close my, my glue stick. I usually use walnut stain, vintage photo, and tea dye. Is my lighting okay? Jeez. So for this particular application, I want one of the darker ones. So we're going to go with uh, I'm kind of digging walnut stain these days, you guys. I don't know. I just think it really makes the whole thing stand out. And I love that. I absolutely love that. So you just go along the edges there. And it just, it creates kind of like a finishing border, in my opinion. And you can see the delineation of the lines and I think that's fabulous. I got a little bit too much there, but that's okay. Do a little more on this side. All right. Okay, now from here, let's put our little pockets together. That looks so cool. I'm kind of crowding myself here. <laughs> All right. Now, I like the way that looks. Did you see how I just did that? I kind of layered. So, got one side down, right? And then the other side. So, here's our two planes, or I should say our two book pages, the bottom. And then I've got a layer on top. And then I just stuck either that one back there, which I think looks cool, or do I like it like this, stuck in front? I don't know, you guys, this is, uh, this is a conundrum. Hmm. Do I want more of the flower to show or this to show? Oh, I think I'm liking the flower. Okay, so we're gonna go with it. Let's glue these down to the page. Uh, let me think about this here. Hold on. Now see, this is where I start thinking about stuff. Now, do I want to sew a little bit on each of these just to give it some more added interest? Perhaps. So let me go do that and I'll be right back and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So hang on. Okay, I am back. And here's what I did is I just sewed, you know, uh, kind of a squiggly stitch along the, uh, just one side of each of the pockets. And I did use a, like a teal green that is kind of going to go with my whole theme on the cover. And, uh, you know, this is my inspiration. So, okay. So where were we? Oh yeah, gluing these down. Okay, so back to gluing them down. All right, so we're just gonna go along two edges. Just line it up. Doesn't matter if it's exact, in my opinion. And then we're gonna go on this side and do that along this right here. That looks cool. All right, and then we're gonna do this one, same deal, just on the outer two edges there. so cool now this one remember on this one I would I wanted to kind of sandwich it in there so I'll, I had to smush it down in there because the glue is still wet on this so let me just hurry and do the two edges on that smush that in there kind of line it up on the bottom and then along the left hand side over here looks fabulous 
All right, now press that down, make sure they're dry, you know, or in the right spot so that they can dry. So there's that. Now from here, you know me, more is more. I am going to continue on and I'm going to probably sew something along the side here. And I will eventually probably, or not probably, I will eventually sew around the whole thing. So this is a preliminary page. So there is one, and let's do one more while I have you guys here. There are so many things you guys can do. This is so fun. So, okay, so where's that? Wait, where's my signature? Oh, no, oh, no. <clears throat> All right, so that goes right along there. Doesn't that look good? Yes, siree. Let's find another page we want to do, maybe in another signature. Let's see. I don't know. Any of these look good, right? There's a center. We could do the center. We could do a plain page. Oh, I don't know. Don't think too much. Just do it. Okay, so we're going to be using some more of our Caprice book pages. So um, let's do this one. Okay, so this is our piece of wallpaper here. I'm gonna fold that down. It's not. It's not. It's not a good crease there. Okay, and this time, rather than doing the outside, we're gonna do. Well, maybe we're we are gonna do the outside. I don't know. Like I said, junk journaling as you go. Let's grab some more pages here. Okay, so here's some interior book pages, but I'm thinking, hold on. Where was that pretty page in the front? There it is. We gotta use her. Ooh, look at that. Look how pretty that is. Ha ha, let me move the light. Light is changing in here. Okay, so let's figure out how to use her on a page. Now I wanna use her as a, hmm, what do I wanna use her as? I don't know. Let's think about this here for a second. I wanna use her as a tuck. So, we're going to cut off some of the edge here again. All right, so let me let me get organized. Yeah, that's a good one. Actually, I am kind of organized, but when I'm in the middle of doing a junk journal page, not so much. So I'm just going to cut the edges down a little bit. Not wanting to cut off her dress. So let me just line that up. Oh, she's so, so stinking pretty. I'll cut off a little bit on the bottom. See how she's looking there. Looks really good. I'm going to cut this off right here. If you can see, kind of like, it's like, it's almost like a line where the drawing stopped. Don't know. All right, move that over. Look at how pretty she is. Oh, I just love this. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna reinforce her because like I said, even though this feels like it's kind of laminated, it's a little bit more sturdy than the regular book pages, I still want to, um, back her with something. So let me see what I have hanging around here. Oh, I have a piece of cardstock. Should I use that? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, what the heck? We'll just use that, right? I, I don't know. Is it going to be too thick? Nah. Okay. And you, as you can tell, this is just a scrap piece of cardstock that I got hanging around here. And I am going to use my two-sided tape. So
so I don't know what you guys think. Here's what I'm thinking here. Um, I'm going to go through and do some more of what I'm calling my Caprice book pages. And I don't know um, if I'm going to do them all on camera or just show you the finished product because I have so much I want to show you guys. And have you have you ever noticed that once you get going um, on adding things, you want to keep adding? At least I do. All right, so that's not long enough. I'm going to keep adding some tape. Oh, no, I ended up with not enough tape. Oh, dang. All right, like I said, I go through this like it's going out of style. So I'm going to go back to Scotch Create Glue Stick. I just like to make sure my stuff sticks. That's what I like to do. So not only am I using double-sided tape, I'm using Scotch Create glue stick to make sure this lady really sticks. And she is going to stick. Let me tell you that. Okay. Bone folder her. <laughs> I'm going to give you the bone folder. All right, there she is. She is stuck down there. I'm going to cut off the edge again. Mm -hmm. Kind of tough. Kind of made a raggedy, raggedy edge. But you know what? I kind of like the raggedy edge because it goes with the whole vintage theme. So let's just tear that off there. Fabulous. Fabulous. All right, let's cut this down. I don't know. Hold on. Back up the truck a minute, Pam. Why not create another scalloped edge? Okay, let's do that. Let me wipe off the glue off my hands here. <laughs> This is how I roll. You know, uh, for the video series, I'm trying to be as organized and as easy to follow as I can. So um, it's still also a matter of just, you know, going with, going with what grabs you. And like I said earlier, one thing leads to another, right? All right. I'm going to create some more jagged edges on the bottom of this to continue on with that, that look that I got going. So I'm just going to tear a little bit here if I can do it without getting all messed up. Oh, that didn't look too good. Oh, rats. Rats. So we're just going to use my scissors again. See, this is what happens. And that looks weird. For some reason, there's something going on back there. So we're going to cut her down some more. I don't like this. See, I'm getting a weird edge right here. So let me cut that off. Where's my other scissors? But, you know what? Nothing is ever... A mistake in the land of junk journals. It's only opportunities for new things. That's what I say. So there you go. Looks good along the bottom. Let's do the same thing at the top. Because I don't know why, but I think the whole scallop look goes along with her and this whole theme, the feminine theme, you know. So there she is. Let me move all my scraps out of the way. All right. So, oh, she looks really good. She looks so good. All right. So we're going to distress her around the edges. Using walnut stain again, I'm going to go very, very lightly along the top there. I should say around the edges, that's what I meant.
And <laughs> I was just thinking, um, I looked up the definition of caprice. Because I'm like, the only thing I know that's a caprice is a car. <laughs> From like the, what was it, the 60s or 70s? A caprice classic, remember that? So caprice. So let me read the definition. Definition is a sudden, impulsing, impulsive, and seemingly unvoted unmotivated notion or action a sudden usually unpredictable condition change or series of changes huh so i guess our lady caprice here was maybe uh prone to mood changes <laughs> oh i think that's funny okay so there you go she is going to be a tuck right here so we're going to put her there but you know what this is where something, one thing leads to another. I think it needs something down here too, but I don't know if I could stick something in there afterwards or right now. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? Just a little bit, another... Another pocket there? Okay, sure. So here's some of the book pages that I um, previously cut up. And should we have My Lady Caprice on top of her? So the words show? I don't think so. I like her dress better than the words. All right, so if I do that, then I could have, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Let's just take one. Cut the top of this one. Keep going on the scallop look, right? The scallop look. I'm just gonna glue this down after I distress the edge here. I don't have more and more of my double-sided tape, so I'm gonna just use my glue stick again. Now I'm gluing this all the way down to the um, piece of wallpaper here, so I don't need to reinforce it with another page because it's not gonna be a pocket, it's just gonna be like a, a decoration. Okay, so that looks really pretty. And then we have our lovely lady right up at the top. Oh, that looks so good. But I like her more towards the bottom down here. So we're gonna glue her on the side there. Stick her down right there. And I'm going to sew around this also. So there is another page using My Lady Caprice pieces of book page. So there she is. Now that goes on the outside of that. All right. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do we have time for one more? Do you guys want to hang and do one more page? Okay. Let's do it. Third signature of using up Caprice pages. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what one to do. Let's do this one. Sure, why not? This is a plain page. No, let's not, because I have something else I want to do with that page, so never mind. I'll show you that, guys that in the next video. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna take out this stenciled page and I am going to create a belly band using some more of my caprice pages this book is going to be used up so let's think about this do I want just the wording in the middle 
because I do I want it like this yeah that's what I want I want to cross so I'm going to do a belly band across but it's not long enough oh but it is this way all right so that's what we're going to do we're going to cut that down just along the edge of that uh, scalloping, which I think is beautiful. Oh, <laughs> doesn't that look good? Yes, yes it does. And I am going to double this one up there again, just because I think it needs to be a little more um, sturdy, because we're gonna make a belly band using this book page right across but knowing me I need something back there to add some color some oomph some something <laughs> so let's see what I got let's look at our offcuts here where are our offcuts what do I do with our offcuts they are down here. Stuff is flying around. Here we go. So what goes good behind that? Oops, it's already sticking. Well, that goes pretty dang good. I'm telling you, that goes good. So does that. I don't like this one as much. I don't like that one as much. Ooh, let's let's just use this one. Okay. So for a belly band, this is going to be a pretty wide one. I'm going to cut that down just a little bit. So this is probably how I gauge an inch is my first section of my thumb. That's about an inch. So I want another at least half an inch on each side. So I'm going to cut that down. And this is there again, eyeballs, eyeballing, right? So I'm going to cut off about, I don't know. I don't know how much. However much this is, half an inch. All right. Move that out of the way. Yep. Oh, that looks good. Am I putting my head in the camera? I have the camera like right above my head and if I lean too far forward, I'll probably, you guys are seeing my my head there. All right, so I'm only gonna do uh, this page here. So I'm gonna fold it over and just cut it off right there. Cut it off right there. There we go with the eyeballing again. Well, kind of half eyeballing because I did make a pencil mark. Okay. So on this belly band, um, it's going to be a tuck here and a tuck here. And you could also do another tuck. You could do a, something um, on top of that, which you never know. I might do. And this is still too long, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna distress the edge here. When I go to um, thrift stores, <laughs> uh, I think it would be kind of funny to watch me because I first look for vintage things. So you can tell when they're all lined up what's vintage and what isn't just by looking at the, the cover and I go by size uh, when I know I want to alter a book and then um, I flip through the pages to see about illustrations and things like this I really don't care what the subject is per se <laughs> so my way of looking for books is probably little bit different than the average person looking for something say to read <clears throat> okay 
That looks really good. All right, so I need to cut that down some more, which I'll go ahead and do, but I'm gonna glue this side together. that side together and cut it down. Okay, so that is going to go on this page. Now, yeah, as you know, I'll sew around the edges. You don't have to do that if you don't have a sewing machine. Just make sure that it's pretty uh, secure there. And one thing leads to another. What I see on this page is some additional embellishment so far as fabric or a ribbon or something clipped right here. Um, it could be a brad. It could be, you know, putting some buttons right along here. So that's kind of how my mind works here. So I am going to fold this over and cut that. Where's my scissors? Here we go. Let's see if I can cut a straight line. Oh, it's scary. I don't know. But since it's uh, right next to the inside of the page, I think it's fine. All right, now we're going to glue these down just on the edge of each side. And there you have it. So that is going to be a two pocket belly band, also made from a Caprice page. Yay! Okay, I don't know, I could continue on forever, but I think I'm gonna um, uh, be finished for today. And then I am going to go through and maybe add some more Caprice book pages to my signatures. And I'll show you that in my next video as we continue on. And we are still doing page embellishments and decorations. So like I said, this is the fun part. And then you never know what's after that. It's going to get even more fun when we add laces and fabrics and... Um, uh, whatever, whatever else, lace, fabric, trim, buttons, you know, doilies, all that kind of stuff. So thank you for hanging with me today and just going with the flow in my crafting process. And I appreciate every one of you. So thank you for watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye!